Well, good morning. This is quite a crowd, very exciting. Welcome to Zurich, welcome to the sixth NIME user group meeting. Um, you all registered, you all wondering why you're getting winter clothes. About half, I mean, I did the analysis with NIME, of course, yesterday, trying to figure out how many people are actually repeat comers, how many come for the first time. Slightly more than half of you should remember last year when the audience towards Thursday afternoon looked very much like this one. When the heating system failed, outside was minus 20 degrees Celsius. What still impressed me and still impresses me is people actually stayed here and had a sense of humor about that. That was just great. So that's why this year, so if that happens again tomorrow, we all have scarves and you can protect yourselves against the cold. Um, okay, where are we here? Just a tiny bit of history. I'm going to take about 20 minutes to do a bit of an introduction, give you a bit of background, what happened last year, where we're going, what happened to NIME in the meantime, before we dive into the really cool stuff and Bernd and Thomas are going to tell you more about um, what NIME has done, what, what actually happened to the software rather than just all of the soft stuff around it. Back then, it's actually interesting. Either I'm getting very old and I really have trouble remembering people, I have that anyway, or this is really growing, right? Now people come and I'm like, man, I know this person, who is that? And you need to actually sometimes peek at the name tags to figure out how this are. It's great to see. Um, we are here, a six user group meeting. Some of you we have met in Boston in September of last year. It was a very exciting little life science day. And then Phil and Rosaria actually put together a great NIME that sort of was the first real local NIME day in Milano last year in October. In Italy, we had about 40 attendees there. That was very great. So we're going to continue that because that was such a very nice success to also support the local NIME communities. We're going to launch a couple more NIME days in the UK, in Germany, in the US, on both sides of the US um, this coming year. So watch, watch out for us coming to your area soon. And then you can already mark your calendars for the next user group meeting again in Zurich, um, February 19th to 20th. Um, I have to so show some charts about numbers of downloads and thingies. I was briefly tempted to show you the same chart five times with different labels on the axis, but figured maybe, maybe that's not such a good idea. So I'll, I'll focus on this one. Attendance of, for the user group meeting is going up. Yesterday evening, thanks to David here, we hit 149. We didn't make 150 as predicted by Rosaria so you know what her predictions are worth. <laughs> um, good. Where is everybody coming from? We are here at Zurich. We are looking for the, the longest distance traveled. It's actually interesting. We have two people from Kenya here. Um, then there was a bit of a tie between Taka and Manling. Taka coming from all the way from Japan. He keeps coming back to our user group meetings. Welcome back, Taka. Wonderful to have you here. And Mang Ling came all the way from San Francisco. You'll notice tomorrow morning the one with the slightly sleepy eyes. That's Mang Ling. Um, and then, of course, the prize for the furthest distance traveled, where is he? Goes to Tom Park, who came all the way from Australia. Welcome, Tom. <laughs> and with tons of other people, some flew in just this morning from Karlsruhe, a um, couple more from Singapore, from the US various points, you see that on the map here. Um, where are we, who is actually using NIME? Uh, who's coming to the user group meeting, but who is using NIME? It's still hard to count. We are still trying to stay away from having NIME call home and tell us how often you use it and what nodes you use, even though every now and then our marketing department, Phil, pushes us to do that. So we don't really know. We are still estimating that we have more, definitely more than 10,000 individuals using NIME. You sort of see from where it gets downloaded, that's probably about 3,000 organizations. And NIME.com, and that's something we know because we sign contracts with those. We have about 300 customers purchasing everything from books to large worldwide server licenses. Um, emerging topics. I wanted to look a bit into um, what is NIME actually being used for, right? Part of the purpose of this user group meeting is to show you a bit of the breadth of applications. It was very nice this year. This was the first year that we actually didn't have to go out and beg people, don't you want to come and talk a bit about what you guys are doing? And the usual response two years ago still used to be, yeah, we're not quite there yet to talk about it. This year was the first time we actually had people come to us and say, hey, I could talk about this. That was really nice. So we were actually able to pick a hopefully very interesting and very diverse program of things happening. What we also did is last year we had this, you may remember, this call for telling us why I name. And that gave us a couple of really, really interesting quotes. Some of those you probably already noticed outside. We're projecting them during the breaks. 
And that's actually nice because it helps you to also illustrate what kind of things um, mime is being used for. And I'm, I picked six of these quotes because they very nicely illustrate the different ways of using mime, right? I mean, the standard one is the one where it says, well, it's about standardization, right? Mime helps me structure my procedures in a clean, reproducible, auditable way that monster spreadsheets just can't match, right? I mean, we still know all of these people who are trying to do all of that data analysis and reporting and redoing the data analysis in Excel and fail miserably, right? And that's, that's really the core of Nine, right? You have workflows, they document what you're doing, you can use that to explain to your neighbor what you're doing. And the nice thing is we actually increasingly see at events, at other events, at conferences, we see people explain what they did using a picture of a Nine workflow, right? It's really a way of also communicating what you're doing. Standardization, you have workflows, others can use that as a template. We see that very often, right? Data integration, I love NIME because it helps me pull all sorts of data together very easily, right? That's NIME again, right? I mean, we have integrations, you can do text mining, you may uh, recognize that picture from last time, network mining, image mining, structure mining, sequence mining, it all integrates into NIME, comes from different sources, different formats, very heterogeneous data, all flows together in NIME and you can do, then run the analysis in one concise way. Tool integration, it's not only about getting all of the data into one monolithic platform that claims to do it all by itself, right? I use NIME because it's the magic glue, I really like that, that quote, the magic glue that allows me to integrate all my applications in a seamless way. I think that one comes from Niels, if I'm not completely mistaken. That's, that's it, right? And instead of now upsetting one of our many technology partners by not showing their notes, but showing the competitors' notes, I focus solely on open source integration here. A small, tiny subset of integrations. It's one nice nine workflow that tells you what's happening. And it's actually using RDKit integrations, um, Greg Landrum's integration, heavily sponsored by Novartis, the CDK, the Chemistry Development Kit integrations, doing something else that they can do better and down here is the Indigo integration, right? So it's very easy to combine tools, in-house tools, tools from the community, or tools from our technology partners there. And you'll also see a very nice way where you don't necessarily need to see a node, but you can integrate, very easily use the pervasive integration to stream your data on, on a Hadoop cluster, for instance. We'll see more about that later. Um, now I'm in action again, the wide range of applications, and hopefully the next two days we'll show some of that to you, demonstrate that the strong NIME platform makes it easy to tackle a huge range of problems. And again, this is, that's a bit harder to pull out the one workflow because the point is it's not just one workflow. Um, but you go to our website, which you see a couple of very few selected examples already, right? We have churn analysis, credit scoring. There's an example workflow. Those are all workflows that you can download from our example server. It's up there on the web. You find it there. You can use the workflow, usually they come with data, you can run it and use it as a template to get started. Social media, music recommendations, sentiment analysis, leader follower analysis in social networks, trying to figure out who's actually influencing the communities, and a couple more of the um, more chemo-informatic virtual high throughput screening data sets. There's more to come. A number of the workflows that we are going to discuss today, we are going to upload that, those to the server as well, most particular the next best offer workflow that I think Bernd is going to briefly mention. We are talking, going to talk about survey analysis. That's something that's also going to pop up on the server. And then there's going to be a talk by Rosai and Phil on um, time series data analysis, big time series data analysis, and also that's going to end up on the server. And a tiny little highlight in terms of what is NIME being used for. Unfortunately, we couldn't get them to come here and talk about it, but I already twisted their arm. They will be here next year. We just um, signed a contract with Activision, a large gaming company, and they're going to use that. They're going to start using Nine for game analytics. That's going to be an interesting talk as well. Um, collaboration, we use Nine because it allows us to share, reuse, and document our complex data analysis processes. Uh, that's the idea. You have a couple of experts actually designing, putting these workflows together, and then others use those as templates or reuse them and don't have to build those things from scratch. Right? And that's part of our enterprise infrastructure, using the server up here, being able to share meta nodes, parts of a workflow that have been proven useful, they work, you just hand them to others and they can reuse them without necessarily understanding the details. Of course, you can also share in the same server infrastructure all of the required files that you need and workflows themselves. Enterprise IT, that was an interesting quote from an, from an IT guy who probably doesn't even use NIME itself. He's just very happy that it's very easy to slide into his IT uh, infrastructure very easily. And that's sort of the lower part of the server diagram, right? All of the user rights management, 
the ability to access nine workflows through web services or custom applications and being able to give people, grant people controlled, authenticated uh, web browser access to, to web workflows. We'll see a couple of examples of that through some of your talks as well. That's an interesting quote, as long as a machine can handle it, Nine will play along. We believe this actually refers to the fact that Nine doesn't do in-memory analysis, but actually pushes it out, caches it out to disk when it becomes too large. So you actually can, with normal Nine out-of-the-box process, 150 million rows, 20 million images, whatever, very easily. But I'm going to use that as a little uh, twist to talk a bit about the big data. We are very happy to be collaborating with Pervasive on that. And that's sort of the diagram um, that we sort of developed to be able to describe what's really going to happen. The nice thing within Nine, a lot of times when companies, analytics companies, talk about big data, they essentially mean we can access Hadoop. And then we do something, we pull it into our infrastructure, and then we start massaging it in memory or on disk anyway. What you can do with the pervasive integration, you can actually do a lot of this ETL, run that actually on Hadoop. Very seamlessly, can, you can move that over. You can say, okay, I'm going to cook down my data to a manageable amount, and then I run the analysis in standard Nine. Or you can even go a bit further and say there's some very efficient analytics nodes in Pervasive as well. They say, okay, let's build this naive classifier really on my terabyte of data and see what happens there, right? So you have the full flexibility of moving that back and forth. And the presentation by Phil and Rosaria in the afternoon and also by um, Jim from Pervasive will illustrate that a bit. He has actually a machine out there. He can show you some of this stuff live. Okay, a couple more just randomly picked 2012 highlights from our perspective. We have a couple of new Nimers. Um, Aaron, is the, and this is in, in the order of when they joined the team. Aaron Hart is our support engineer. Luckily, most of our users, customers, are very friendly people, so he doesn't need to wear that helmet often. Um, Robin Stunzi, we're very happy she joined us uh, in April, I believe. She is now responsible for a lot of the behind-the-scenes stuff, and she is also able to actually communicate with the Swiss Germans. Christian Albrecht, I can't tell you what he's doing. He's still in stealth mode. You'll see with Nime 2.8 some of the cool stuff, and then you know who did that. Patrick Winter, almost. He's currently an intern, but we already twisted his arm into staying longer. He's going to join Nime full-time this summer. We're still hiring. If you know cool people who want to work on even cooler software, let us know. Um, what else? The, some of the Nime partners you have seen over the years, they were here before, as I said, Taka, very loyal, keeps coming back all the way from Japan. Infocom has been a very, very constructive partnership for us in Japan. Soluzione Informatica in the life sciences in Italy. Dimetrix, you'll see them. He's also, Stefan is here. He's going to talk about that a bit as well. Very, very positive partnership with Dimetrix for business intelligence type of applications and Ontario also in Germany for the life sciences. I'm very proud to be able to welcome two new partners on board. Uh, we signed an agreement very recently with DRI, who are also here, for Portugal and Scandinavia, also in the business intelligence, CRM type, social network um, markets, and they're also branching out to the US, so that gives us a, a bit of a US base as well. And even more recently, Avarto in Spain, also for the business intelligence market. Welcome, and they're also here. You can talk to them. They are around. Um, that was an, an highlight, and actually that's, that's you. Most of you probably participated in this survey when we, asked, when we baked you, asked you to do that. It's a much more comprehensive survey than some of these what's your favorite tool type things that are out there as well. They actually ask lots of questions about how you use it and what kind of problems you run into. We came out very nicely. We were very, very happy with the results. We were particularly happy that Nine came out in a top, on top in a lot of the categories that related to user satisfaction. Don't look too deeply into the numbers. I know that it's not always statistically significant that you're one promille above another one, but we are certainly, the green ones are sort of the winners in those categories that have something to do with ease of use, right? Stability of the software, that type of stuff. That's something we're really happy about. And we'll continue working hard to actually maintain that leadership in these categories and maybe get some of these others as well. That was a nice result. So when you see us, ask again. I mean, the survey is already open for 2013. We're going to send out an email soon, and it will show up in your tips and tricks soon. Please participate. That definitely helps us to also get gets us some more visibility in some other markets as well. Um, you, some of you may still remember that in 2010, Gardner named us Cool Vendor for Business Intelligence and Analytics. That came a bit surprising since then we actually started talking to them. And we are now also on their Who is Who in Text Analytics list. Um, nice way of getting some recognition in that space as well. 
Um, and of course, the 2012 highlight, you saw those in your mailbox and hopefully in your download folder. 2.6 came out, 2.7 came out late last year for the Nikolaus release. We've hopefully done a lot of new stuff, added new features in NIME that are also helpful to you. And Bernd will be talking about some of that, that stuff in just a minute. Okay, the first highlight of this year for us, I mean, we've all been working hard and especially Robin, Heather and Thomas has been running around like nuts pulling this user group meeting together. Uh, let me very briefly go over the agenda so you have an idea what we have up the sleeve for you over the next two, two and a half days. We'll start this, you're almost done with that one for good luck and then we're going to start talking about cool stuff. Bernd is going to tell you what's new, what happened sort of in 2012, new features in desktop and also some of the server features. And Thomas will give you a little bit of a peek of what we're currently working on, new developments that will likely show up in 9.2.8 or 2.9. We'll have a lunch. We'll have a user session, a couple of user um, use case talks, very interesting stuff coming from Lithium um, and also the Deutsche Telekom Bank Frei will talk a bit about automating reports. We'll have a partner session, some of our partners, the metrics I already mentioned and pervasive. Um, and then we have a second set of talks about um, some, some more business intelligence oriented um, applications. A small happy hour if you need to go back to the hotel, drop off your stuff. And then at seven o'clock, um, we'll start the dinner right outside. You probably already noticed uh, the table set up outside for, for the nine user group meeting dinner. Um, Thursday is then a bit more life science oriented. We'll start off, we'll give Meng Ling while she's still awake after her long trip from San, F San Francisco a chance to talk couple of other talks. Um, Frank Gulver was actually going to talk about interesting stuff. For those of you who were here last year and they remember the big buzz that Phil, Killian and Tobias created about combining text and network analytics, he has actually done that on real data at Burring and Ingheim. That ought to be interesting. We'll then give our technology partners in that space a chance to briefly present their extensions for NIME. Um, and then we have uh, one more session on, on user stories before we dive a bit more in the community projects. This is interesting because it's sort of the first time that we're really talking about serious bioinformatics type activities within the NIME space. And then after that, we'll have a networking uproar. Again, those who were here last year may remember the little stands with the crepe and the raclette. We'll do that again after the huge success last time. Then on Friday, we have uh, workshops very similar to last year. This is not yet a fixed allocation of names um, to slots, but essentially, we have uh, four of our partners giving brief trainings for an hour and a half. Um, we have a few of the community extensions. Paladin is presenting the text mining extensions. We'll be talking about the image processing and the text mining extensions that are driven by NIME. And we also have a server course for those of you who want to know how the server works or those of you who have it want to know how to operate it. Feel free to, to join that. Um, and Jean-Christophe, I did notice this morning that we omitted the Ö from Schrödinger, so there it is. Friday workshops, if you haven't registered, please let us know so we can plan a bit. If you notice that the two workshops that you really desperately want to attend are actually scheduled for the same time slot, let us know. We can't promise that we can avoid all of the conflicts, but if too many people want to listen to, I don't know, the server course and the text mining stuff, we'll make sure that we decouple those. So we'll announce tomorrow, uh, probably right after lunch, we'll let you know what the final allocation of these workshops is to, to the Friday schedule. So please talk to Robin or Heather at the registration desk and let them know. Um, which two workshops you want to attend. Um, again, mark your calendars for the next user group meeting. Now I'm going to do something I've always wanted to do, always dreamt of doing, being able to say, oh, and there's one last thing. <laughs> Nine, San Francisco will be opening its doors this summer. So we are starting to go international. That's it from my side. Thank you very much all for coming. I hope you're going to have a fun time here, productive time. You meet cool people, nice people, and learn something new about NIME. Thank you very much.